When the topic of battle droids or battle droid armies comes up, most people, when talking about Star Wars, think of the Confederacy of Independent Systems and their many trillions of droids fielded during the Clone Wars. Well, that army was good, it never quite dominated, and the droids didn't push the army to the next level, unlike the creations we're about to discuss. Zim the Despot was one of the greatest warlords in galactic history, creating an empire over 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. Zim brutally violated, sacked, and conquered worlds across the galaxy, acquiring unimaginable wealth. During his war against the Huts, Zim's military, however, took on a bold new form, an army of special troopers made up of gigantic, three meter tall war robots. Although incredibly ancient by modern standards, Zim's droids were powered by an even more ancient force, the Rakata. Allegedly, the most advanced models of Zim's droids were augmented by force imbued technologies, far increasing their capabilities and allowing them to devastate enemies with their thick armor, heat beams, particle weapons, and pulse wave blasters. However, even standard droids use reverse engineered Rakatan technology and this gave them several edges. The key one was probably intelligence. Although again, the droids were ancient by modern Star Wars standards and lacked the true intelligence of something like C-3PO or even a super battle droid, the Essential Guide to Warfare states that, unlike prior droid models, they had at the very least a glimmer of intelligence. That being said, during battle, they very rigidly and literally interpreted their orders, which were usually dispensed remotely by an organic commander. Still, the extra intelligence would have made the droids just overall more effective workers. Zim's war droids were very large and bulky. Though they were quite difficult to destroy, they were also very slow, heavily armored almost everywhere. These aren't like armored humanoid soldiers, they're more like walking tanks. Unfortunately, well not really for the rest of the Star Wars universe, but for the army at least, Zim was captured and eventually died under the huts. Many of his droids afterwards, which were produced on a much, much more limited run than later droid armies, were then destroyed by the Huts at the Third Battle of Vontor. With Zim dead, and no more droids being actively produced, the Essential Guide to Warfare explains that the remaining units were handed down among ancient families as bodyguards, while others were stationed on long-lost outposts of the Despot's Empire. At least two of these hidden caches saw action during the modern Star Wars era. During the early Galactic Civil War, a thousand of Zim's robots, a brigade known as the Guardian Corps, was accidentally activated, destroying the miners on the planet Dalat, as we see in Han Solo and the Lost Legacy, though most of those were eventually destroyed when a bridge collapsed under their weight. Despite being over 25,000 years old and unused for almost that entire time, the war droids operated perfectly, showing no signs of aging, speaking to the quality of their creation, as well as the incredible and mysterious Rakatan technology that helped to power them. Another group of droids had, well, a bit more fun of a final stand. The Hut seized some of Zim's remaining droids after the Battle of Vontor and brought them back to their home space. During the Yuzhan Vong War, as the Vong betrayed the Huts, who had been working with them prior to that, and moved into Hut territory, many of Zim's droids were reactivated and managed to kill thousands of Vong warriors before being destroyed. This is not unlike the squadron of B2s who also fought the Vong in a video which I'll link above. Again, that's 25,000 years of biding their time, and they still devastated Vong warriors, which were nearly unequaled in strength and combat skill. This also makes me wonder how Zim's droids would have done against Lando's YVHs. YVHs probably had better armor and tactics, just given to the time of their design, but Zim's droids probably make up for some of that by being much, much larger. 
I think overall the YVHs would probably be better against single high skill opponents or in tight spaces like starships, but that Zim's droids would still have their uses as well, especially in large battles. But that's all I have to say about Zim's droids, let me know what you think down in the comments and whether there's any other topics you'd like me to cover for Star Wars Legends. Before we leave though, we do have a hashtag ask Ek question of the day, and this is one I've gotten a bunch of times, so I might as well address it. It comes from Inflicted4, who says, Between 130 and 140 of the last video I put out, when I was depicting the Yuzhan Vong invasion of Yavin, it looks like there's two Marathon class heavy cruisers and a Paris frigate. And yeah, that is exactly what that is. I throw those in as Easter eggs often when I'm doing a Star Wars battle breakdown video. Usually if I need something to represent either an unidentified ship type, just some sort of general frigate or freighter, because I think Halo ships look really cool and they've got a nice aesthetic to them, especially when viewed from the top, the frigates in particular. So yeah, not a mistake, it was a purposeful choice and I'm sure you'll see more in the future. Actually, if you look back in videos, there's a lot more than just Halo ships thrown in and I'm curious to hear if you guys have spotted any others. But that's all for today. Thanks as always for watching guys. I really appreciate each and every one of you. As always, have a great week and may the Force be with you.